All right. Good morning. Happy uh, Happy Saturday. I'm hoping that everybody's commute into this meeting was uh, a safe one and a warm one. Uh, welcome to the 2024 Science Olympiad Reflection Relay uh, Extravaganza, I think is what it's being called. Um, we're just going to go over the uh, what Reflection Relay is all about. Um, if you are a returning customer, thank you for coming back. Good to see you. I do recognize some of the names um, that I'm seeing up here on the screen. Uh, if you are new, um, take a couple deep breaths and enjoy. This is this is an awesome, awesome event. I've been the uh, head coach or the not, not the head coach. I've been the supervisor for a couple of years, um, but all of my kids, one that is now in college, they've all done reflection relay, and uh, I've really enjoyed teaching them and watching them uh, kind of get the grasp and that light bulb turn on and then them being successful. So um, today's format, we're gonna, uh, if you have any questions, you can post them in the uh, chat session or in the, in the chat page on this uh, Teams call. You can also raise your hand and we'll get to you eventually. Uh, I do have a video that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna share that's kind of a how to and what to expect um on the competition day and even the practice tournament days uh and then afterwards we'll open it up for questions whether it be the the chat questions or if you raise your hand um i believe uh, mr ogden will call on those and let me share my screen and let's get going on that uh that video so let's talk about the law of reflection a mirror has a normal line this will be considered like zero degrees you have an incident angle, which is a light coming into the mirror, and you have the reflected angle, which is a light leaving the mirror. These two angles are measured off of the normal line, and they must equal each other. Let's talk about the anatomy of a mirror. I'm gonna zoom in pretty close here. With a mirror, there is a reflective side. In the old days, it was silver. The top side is covered with glass, a protective coating. When you're dealing with the incident angle and the reflective angle, trying to figure out the actual angles off of the normal line, you have to take into account the thickness, minute as it may be, of the glass. This is the reflective part on this side, and then the glass portion, which is up on top. So the light actually reflects from the very tip here, goes all the way through that glass. Let's talk about the tabletop portion. For the tabletop portion, the students will be provided four of these mirrors that are mounted on blocks that they can place anywhere on the table not just on the white piece of paper. The white piece of paper measures one and a half feet by three feet. This work area is where the students can write, can draw lines to take that laser path with the laser being off, place the mirrors and figure out the angles to get to the target somewhere taped off of the working white paper. The students can bring any materials they want in to help them, but they cannot bring a light source. These mirrors, which are mounted to the wooden block, have a little center mark on them, so the students know exactly where the center of that mirror is. These protractors I printed up on a transparency will not be provided, but you, your team can provide them if that would help them. The only marking that's going to be on the paper is a six inch line that shows the path that the laser is going to take. It's six inches from the base of the laser. All these other markings are just for demonstration purposes that I have on the paper right now. The students are gonna have five minutes to set up the table how they want to reflect that laser. 
using that white piece of paper, they can draw lines to figure out their angles to reflect that laser off of the mirrors. The more mirrors they hit, the better it is for the score. The mirrors don't have to be on the playing field. They can be off the playing field too. After the five minutes, the students will step away from the table and a judge is gonna come by and use this white piece of paper to figure out how many mirrors the laser is reflecting off of. Let me turn the lights off and I'll show you how that works. So here we can see one, two, three mirrors coming over to the fourth. Yep, hits the fourth mirror and then goes to the target. So I'm gonna turn the lights back on and let's talk about the target for a second. The target's gonna be taped down. Let's talk about the scoring on the target. I guess it can best be described as a multiplier. If we look closely here, so right now the lasers in the bullseye portion, so the highest multiplier. Now it's in the lower multiplier. So this entire center portion is the higher multiplier. If it's on the line, we're gonna give it the higher score. Even if it's barely on the target, it's still on the target, so you'll get the lower multiplier. You don't get any extra bonuses for being right in the very center. Sometimes there will be an obstacle on the course. The more mirrors you hit, the better it is for your score. If you hit one mirror, and then hit the target, you'll get one point. Depending upon where you hit on the target, that's your multiplier. So if you were to hit two mirrors, then you will get th only three points for the mult and then have the multiplier. So if it's on the outside of that target, your multiplier is four. If it's on the inside of that target, your multiplier is six. If you hit three mirrors, you get six points times your multiplier. If you get four mirrors, you got 10 points times your multiplier. You can achieve points without hitting the target. You just won't get that multiplier. All right, let's move on to the 3D portion. When the students enter the room, they'll see a protractor on the floor. It's an 80 centimeter radius protractor. They're not allowed to touch it stand on it, that's going to be just below where the stationary mirror is located. The students will be given three handheld mirrors. The fourth mirror will be located just above the protractor. That mirror height will be either at the flashlight level, six inches below, or six inches above. Only one mirror will be visible. The light source will be a flashlight, a mag light style flashlight with a focusable beam. This is a 3D cell mag light. Somewhere in the room will be a red target and a green target. I'm gonna ask the teams who the team leader is. That person will be the spokesperson. The team will be given one minute to set up their positioning with the flashlight being off. If the team is able to set up before that one minute has expired, the team leader needs to announce, we are all set or something to that effect. We're gonna stop the stopwatch and record that time. That time will be used for a tiebreaker. Once the students are all set, then we're going to turn off the lights in the classroom. It gets very, very dark. Make sure your students are prepared for that.
at this point, we're going to read some instructions and the judge is going to turn the flashlight on and start the stopwatches at the same time. The team will have a total of one minute to reflect the light off of all four mirrors. And hopefully be on target. They have to stay on the target for a total of three seconds. If they come off the target, then the time will, the three seconds will start all over. Once they're on the target for three seconds, we'll go one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, we'll stop the time and record it. This process will be repeated for the green target. That time will also be recorded and the two times will be averaged together for your score. For the tabletop portion, every team will start out with 60 points. Depending upon the number of mirrors and your target value, the multiplier, it's going to be figured out either 0 to 60 points will be subtracted from 60. For the 3D part, your two scores will be averaged together and that will be added onto your 2D score. So the score ranges total would be 3 to 120. The lower the score, the better. Okay, John, can you hear me? I can. Okay, I hope that video went out and everybody was able to hear it. And I hope everyone had their rose colored glasses when they saw our basement. I just, I've had that video for a couple of years and holy cow, our basement, but whatever, uh, that's how we practice. So I do have a couple points to bring up um, because we have had some equipment change out. Uh, number one, let's, well, first, let's talk about the 2D, the 2D portion, which is the tabletop, um, when you have the laser taped to the uh, table. Um, I made the comment that the on those wooden blocks that there is a center mark in, the, uh, in those blocks. Uh, some blocks have them, some blocks don't. So that's, you can't completely rely upon that. Um, the newer blocks do not have the, the little center mark um, on there. Um, also, one of the major things that from that video, that video was our old laser. Now we have a new laser. Um, these are the new lasers that uh, we can't get the old ones anymore. So these are the new ones. There is no adjusting for the vertical to make sure the laser is perfectly vertical. However, there's some really cool uh, bubble levels that are that are on here. This will also be taped down. There's a little uh, uh, tab on the front and on the back. So that's gonna be easier for us to tape down and secure to the table. So that's um, also in there. This is a, runs on two uh, AAA batteries. There are pins in there um, in that battery compartment. They're a bugger to get out. Just leave them in there. We're not gonna use them. All right, so let's go on to the 3D part. Um, before you so, before you move on, Mike, I'll just yes. comment that the the performance of that laser is functionally equivalent to the ones that were in the previous reflection relay kits. So yes, yeah, so you yeah the, the kids is if the if the teams already have a reflection relay kit, and, but they would like one of those new lasers, they are available on our quick start kit sale, uh, but functionally it's not it's not critical. Correct. It just looks different. Um, uh, so with the 3D part, um, the targets on the video, the, the target was the same. It had a red and a green side uh, for competition and even the practice tournament. 
they will be separate. There will be a green target and there will be a red target. The sizes can vary. Uh, if you look at the rules, it tells you what the what the size range can be. Um, also, we've had this uh, question in previous years. Uh, you have to have three members uh, to participate in the 3D part. Um, we can't do it with any less. Um, so your team should consist of three students uh, for the reflection relay part. Um, also in there, I, I did mention for the 3D part that uh, we'll be looking and listening for a student team leader. Um, that's also going to come into play for the 2D part. So it's really a good idea to have a team leader for the whole thing. Uh, because there are some documents that need to be signed by the, the student team leader um, that's participating in that reflection relay. Those were the only, uh, you know, couple things that really stood out from that video. So uh, at that, I think I'm ready to, to answer some questions from everybody. So you can either um, raise your hand and Mr. Ogden will call on you or you could submit a question on the uh, chat tab. All right, Mr. Ogden, I see uh, Michael has raised his hand. Hi, good morning, Mike. Hi, good morning, good name, good name. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's a quick question. Is there anything that the uh, parents need to purchase or provide outside of what we have in the kit already? Uh, that's a very good question. So um, I guess it depends upon what your students need to help them complete the task of the of the 2D part, really. Um, mm -hmm. Some some students have brought in rulers, uh, the the like the metal ones that in case they drop they don't break or get bent. Um, some kids have brought in uh, like spaghetti or um, welding rods or string and tape and so I mean there's nothing major that needs to be purchased. Uh, yeah, probably just normal household goods is is what the kids can bring with them in to help them out. They just can't bring their own laser in. Got it. So if there is was any. Yeah, no, if there's any kind of, you know, aid or anything we have around the house to help them out with anything, then that's acceptable. It's not against the rules per se, right? Correct. Yeah. And and really, we're we're teaching the kids angles and boy, if they master this, they'll master, uh, you know, billiards and, you know, understand all the angles and, you know, trigonometry and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to get started with, um, to try to, you know, some kids get it, some kids don't. And it, in just working with the kids that don't get it, that's where, that's where the challenge is as a coach. We have a question from Brian. He is interested to know whether parents and coaches will be able to view or watch the students during the event. So, uh, good question. Um, that is still up in the air right now. Uh, in previous years, uh, parents and spectators were not allowed. Um, then it slowly transitioned to where they were allowed to be in the room. So uh, the main issue on having spectators in the room is keeping everybody extremely quiet um, because the kids are gonna be working together. They're gonna be um, communicating uh, with their team members and we wanna make sure that they are not distracted. And um, I would hope that, they, that there would be no input from the spectator crowd. So, uh, that's something that we'll have to decide as the day gets closer. I will say that if we do let parents uh, and uh, coaches watch what's going on, uh, I just request that you guys treat Mr. Woods team with respect and that you 
and you know you follow this rule of silence like there can be no talking there can be no signaling you know hands raised everything uh, the the observers while the kids are competing you guys need to be a statue nothing nothing going on when they're done you know feel free to congratulate your kids by clapping or whatever and show them your appreciation for the great job they did but until that moment your job is to be a statue so we've got um sarah uh, has raised her hand and so if she'd like to unmute her microphone she can ask her question yes thank you good morning um so i'm a first-time coach and just wondering we have our first practice coming up and how you would start th with the first practice maybe some ideas of like what you do in the first practice of reflection relay to get them um at least engaged in understanding so i i think the biggest thing is just getting the kids to understand the laws of light that light does not bend light always goes in the same in in a in a very straight line um the children's or your, your students input can affect the light um, both the input of the light and the input of the mirror itself so teaching the kids angles um you know letting them watch that video that we just that i just showed you is mm -hmm. you know um at least that you can play it back a couple times or the kids can play it back a couple times because i know i do talk fast in that that whole video was was ideally a, to bring the coaches up to speed, um, but most certainly the kids can watch it. Um, and then uh, just trying to figure out which child or which student is the less fidgetiest, because um, for that three D part, one of the students has to it has to try to stay very still. Actually, all the students have to stay still to be able to hold that light reflected on the target for the three seconds. So um, teaching them different stances, uh, how to brace themselves without leaning on something. Can they lean on something? Sure, but we don't know what, or I should say, you guys won't know what the classroom setup is gonna be like, and if they're gonna be able to lean on something. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's helpful, thank you. Pike, you might comment about the obstacles that might exist in those classrooms as well. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, we're dealing. So the the main competition is at Macomb Community College, the Warren campus. So we're going to be dealing with classrooms. Uh, they're all lecture rooms. So um, regular uh, tables that are for adults and chairs that are for adults. Um, we try to move a lot of this stuff out of the way. But we may strategically leave something in in the way, or or you know, an obstacle that they have to get around. Um, there's nothing major. the The one thing that I kind of enjoy is making the room completely dark. So uh, for the 3D part, that room is pitch black. And uh, you know, one one little tidbit is it, have your students know where that target is because once that light turns off they're not going to see it until that flashlight gets turned on and their time starts so if they get lost and are walking around they may walk into things now we're not gonna let the kids get hurt they may just bump into a table or bump into a chair but there there's nothing dangerous in these rooms it's just a regular college classroom Are there other questions? I think we got a uh, Michael has his hand raised again. Yeah, just just to comment on the uh, the 3D portion. So just to clarify, so when we go in the classroom with the kids, they'll have a little bit of time prior to the lights turning off to kind of gain their um, surroundings, see where the original targets are at, and does that give them a chance to actually get into position? generally where they should all be standing to get it and then it's just fine tuning when the lights go off or should they be moving around or do they stand in one static spot and then move at the positions after the lights go off so uh good question these um there's going to be a judge in every room that's 
kind of in charge of all the students. This is a, a very high volunteer um, event that that I run. Um, it's just it's a lot of manpower to make sure everything stays fair and there's contingencies if something were to go wrong, which it never does. Um, but so when the kids walk into the 3D part, they will the lights will be on. The judge is going to start addressing them. So they'll have the opportunity just to look around, but they should be listening to what the judge is telling them to. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing's hidden. Then uh, once the judge hands them the mirrors, then the judge makes the announcements. Okay, uh, your setup time, you have one minute to set up and your time begins now. And then that judge and other people in the room will make sure that they are out of the way so that those kids can move around freely. They have one minute to walk around and kind of get into a position. Uh, hopefully it can be an accurate position, but it can be a, a rough position. Um, and then the time, once that 60 seconds is up, the time, the timers stop their, their clock, they record the time, the lights get turned off, it's completely dark. Now the flashlight will be, be turned on and the judge will have some more readings, even in the dark, she'll have some readings and then she'll say, okay, I, I say she, it could be a, a male in there too. Um, all right, your, your time starts in three, two, one, and then they start to stop watches and the flashlight gets turned on. Now the kids, they can move around and readjust, get into that beam of light, um, whether it be the original beam coming off that flashlight or the reflected coming off of any of the four mirrors. The ideal, Mike, uh -huh. was those students would find their spot, their all their respective spots in that one minute, right? That that would be yeah. the ideal performance, I would think. Yeah, a, and, a, per, a perfect. And the, and the faster they can do it, the better their, because that time that they're taking to do it is the tiebreaker you mentioned. Yes. So uh, uh, the perfect scenario is the kids are just rock stars, and they're lined up when those lights are when the light is turned on in the room. The kids are lined up and they don't move. They don't even flinch. There's, they're probably not even breathing. And then that flashlight gets turned on and boom, they're on the target right away. So the best score they can get is three seconds because it's already on target. Um, yeah, the, the lower the score, the better. I'm sorry, John, I don't remember what the second part of your. No, that was fine. Okay. Uh that's great. We have another question, uh, James, if you want to unmute and ask your question. Is there a minimum distance between the students? Uh, no, there is not. They can okay. be right on top of each other. They just can't be um, touching the, the, the flashlight, okay. the, the light source, which we will have two flashlights in the room because we have two different targets. We'll have two different flashlights for the different color targets. Okay. Um, and they and they can't be touching that uh, um, protractor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can't be touching the protractor that's on the floor. Gotcha. Mike, I'm good. The, Thank you. The second mirror. Uh, does the fixed mirror on the wall have to be a particular one in the sequence? I have a... Okay. So uh, no, it does not. Um, but the students have to use that stationary mirror. Um, there will be, for the competition day, there will be two mirrors. In that same vertical line, um, there'll just be a little bit of a height difference, whether it's going to be six inches higher or six inches lower. It can be in that range. Okay. Any other questions? So I am super excited about this season. Um, if you look on the frequently asked questions on the SO website, um, any questions that have been asked in previous years, we publish on there. So everyone can see the question that is asked um, and then see the response to it. If you guys have any questions, you can submit questions to me about this event, and then I will not respond directly to you. I will take your question and put it up on that frequently asked questions site with the answer. Um, I, I, I should preface, if the question was already addressed on that FAQ, my response to you would be, hey, it, the, that question was already posed on the frequently asked questions site. 
We have another question, Sarah, if you want to unmute and ask it. Good morning. Thank you. I missed my computer's laggy. I'm out in Riley, Michigan, so I was not hearing it. When you were talking about the newer lasers or the updated lasers, how do we get those? So uh, those are, able, are available for purchase through uh, the SO um, kits. There's a quick and it's not an ordering system that you'll find many links on our website too. Um, and you can you can get them that way. Uh, they're not required. If you already have a kit, the laser that you have works great. But if you feel the need to get the one that we were forced to switch to, uh, they are available to purchase individually. Thank you. And also because your computer was a bit lagging, um, Mr. Ogden is recording this and he will post that. So you'll be able to look at it all um, uninterrupted when your internet connection gets better, I guess, or your, or your computer gets better. Within a day or two, we hope to have all of the videos posted. Other questions? All right, I think we're done. Good. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining in. Um, could you imagine if we had school today? We won it. It'd be a snow day. Uh, have fun shoveling snow, though. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.